Hello everyone and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel Global Astrology Know Your Nation Know Yourself and now before shooting this video um, I thought to myself ah oh, you know people will need explainers about what houses means what, what, what charts mean and stuff like that and I was thinking of doing different videos for various different bits and bobs now I will do that but given the current environmental uh, global situation going on around the world right now basically I, I just don't think there's 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 time for that uh, the situation is too pressing so this uh, being a uh, global astrology and then I forgot to say hello this is the this is the hoagie meister here um, if you like my uh, channel uh, please subscribe and uh, click the notification button and please share if you think this is uh, relevant or helpful to other people right so so we know that the whole world at the moment is in a very, very serious uh, situation with uh, what I shall call uh, the big CV. We all know what that is. And uh, we're dealing, uh, heart, of course, thoughts and uh, prayers go out to uh, families dealing with loved ones that they, that they have lost. And I wanted to take this opportunity just to shed some light on the scenario, um, A, just for ourselves so we understand what's going on and also to understand that, that we will come through the other side. But as we've seen in the news in regards to CV, um, various nations have fared better than others. So if we think of um, a country, say like Germany, for example, uh, that's actually faring very well so far. I'm yet to do a full scale version um, of their chart. But um, this, uh, this, literally, this illustration here should help people understand what's going on. Now, I've done previous talks on this, uh, and I've done this on the Inspired Stage platform, and there is a video on YouTube for that, so I will put that uh, link to that video in the, in the description bar below uh, this video that you'll see here. But look, I just wanted to show you this. Now... The channel, of course, is Global Astrology, so let's get global. You will see here, of course, from, from the map, this is the natal national chart for Italy. Now, you're probably thinking, how, how do I work this out? Now, what we need to understand is this. Anything that has that is animate and has a birthday can have a chart. So that, of course, includes people, it includes pets. But what a lot of people don't know, it also includes companies because, of course, they they uh, function with people. Um, but also, most importantly, nations. And this is where I wanted to give people just a different kind of spin on uh, on astrology. So I hope we, we can see this map. I've had to adjust the camera a few times <laughs> to get these things right. Now, I wanted to just take this opportunity to do almost a whistle stop tour of the foundations of Vedic astrology because I'm a neo Vedic astrologer. What does that mean? It means that I use the principles of Vedic astrology, Indian astrology, which is different from tropical Western. And, uh, and why is it neo Vedic? It's because I include the outer planets. Now, the difference between sidereal astrology and uh, Western astrology is that in sidereal astrology, we use the actual placements of where the planets are in the sky. So we can just say it's like NASA style. Yeah, um, I can do an explainer video on so at some point of why those uh, uh, why the Western and the tropical. Uh, sorry, why the Western and the Indian are in different uh, positions is to do with an astronomical factor called the precession of the equinoxes where the stars effectively move backwards in the sky and because that happens uh, it happens they, they move by one degree every 72 years backwards and because that's been happening for a very long time now the um, actual astrological astronomical position of the star signs has moved backwards by a sign. So a lot of people that are Aries, it actually turns out that they're probably Pisces. And this has also led to a lot of uh, confusion and why people believe astrology doesn't work because they say, ah, 
I read that sign and, you know, it doesn't make it, it doesn't seem to apply to me at all. But I read the sign before and I feel like I'm much more like that one. Uh, that is why. Now, look, I'm just going to get stuck in here because there's a lot of elaborate stuff to kind of talk about. But one of the most important things um, that we need to understand and what I want to share with people on this channel is the importance of the pla of the planets. Now, forgive me for using a paintbrush. I am uh, an artist, but uh, my wand is currently being repaired. Anyway, so there are imp important things to understand. One of the most important things to understand as a concept in astrology, before you even understand the planets, is the houses. So what are the houses? So we see here we've got houses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Each house... Uh, refers to an aspect of life so the houses have multiple multi-layered meanings and the gift is for the astrologer to be able to correctly intuit and apply those meanings in a meaningful context but and this and the importance of this will begin to make sense and then I'll talk about the planets but one of the one of the most important houses to talk about is the first house yeah now the first house represents the personality it represents how we come across. It represents the whole life path. It also uh, represents the body and what tends to actually physically play out in our lives. The first house also always has the ascendant. So this is a traditional uh, South Indian chart and they show the first house by scoring those two lines. Imagine that this is a circle. How do you do, how do you how do you decide what is the first house on a circle? Right. So you have to use the um, horizon. So if you imagine here, if I actually just kind of let's just say I kind of put this in half like this. This is the horizon. Yeah. So what that means is the way you decide the first house when you are born, irrespective of that time or when a nation is born, as in the nation of, of, of Italy, so on the 17th of the 3rd, 1861, and the time, time I chose for them uh, was, I can't remember the time actually, I think it was midday, um, that will decide what sign was rising over the eastern horizon at the time that that nation or that person was born and that's how you decide the first house so imagine this is the sky that's the horizon gemini was rising for italy at the time of its birth now this is really important and i want everyone to understand this because i'm just going to leap in with with a symbol with a symbolism that is very very significant i'm calling the cv the cv virus i'm calling that the gemini disease why part of the reason why it is is because in astrology these 12 houses also respond correspond not only to the signs but also to parts of the body now a lot of people don't know this but gemini corresponds with the hands the arms part of the upper chest but most importantly the lungs yeah think about that what has it what have we all been talking about wash your hands and look after it's the lungs it is a, a respiratory disease also as well we need to understand that planets rule certain signs so planet mercury rules gemini which is the sign of communication gatherings, networking, siblings, all of that mingling, yeah? And it also rules over the sign Virgo, which is to do with health, uh, which is to do with daily commutes, which is to do with work, which is to do with day jobs in particular, and also jobs that, that um, are not traditionally held in very high esteem or recognised as important. Now, can you see, when you put all those factors together in your head, why I say that this is a Gemini disease, 
and how we can see by us being restricted in our movements, in our socialising, what have we been asked specifically to do? Socially distance. Gemini and planet Mercury is is the actual site is the social sign that's what gets us going it's also travel airplanes airports buses commuter services any form of uh uh thing that re requires a connectivity similar to aquarius aquarius does it on a, on a bigger scale but if we think of internet email social media all of these things they're all covered they come under the realms of mercury now let's just find mercury here on the italian chart this is the glyph for mercury and this is very very significant because what i have found in my research depending on the state the natal state of Mercury in a nation's chart has directly affected how that nation has responded to what I refer to as this Gemini disease, you know, CV. A, a nation with a bit of a dodgy Mercury, they are really struggling. Now, um, you might think this is an extraordinary thing, Hoagie Meister. How on earth can you come out with something like that? But Trust me, it does bear out. And this is why I've created this uh, channel so we can really understand how the planets, the movements of the planets affect things. Because as they say, it's the Hermetic or uh, Hermes Trismegistus saying, which is as above, so below. And this is something that we all should, we should all learn about. Now I'm going to quickly whip through the houses and then I'm going to talk more specifically about um, what's going on with Italy. So second house here, this is the house of um, family. It is the house of um, food. It is the house of um, our resources. It's the house of our savings. It's the house of our, of, of our money. This is very, very important. The second house uh, aligns with the second sign of the zodiac, which is Taurus, which is ruled by planet Venus. And this is all to do with with, you know, our, our basic uh, necessities, our amenities, how we put food on the table and how much money we have in the bank and how much we earn is to do with this house. And certain planets like uh, certain houses better than others. So if we look here, if we see here Jupiter, you see the signs around here. These are always fixed in this type of chart. You see Jupiter is here in the second house is in the sign of Cancer. That creates exaltation for planet Jupiter. This will all be explained in later videos. But if you think about this, Jupiter is the jolly planet. It's the jovial planet. It likes to reach out. It likes to expand. It likes to touch. It likes to uh, hold things. It's, it's, it's um, our philosophies, our belief systems, how we go about our life, what inspires us. Now, we've got Jupiter here, which is a very optimistic, outreaching planet in the second house in the Italian chart, which we already know is to do with family. And it's exalted. Now, what are one of the things that there are many nations, but what are one of the things that the Italians are famous for? Family, love of family. It is exalted in the national chart, but you see it's retrograde. I'll explain a little bit more of that. When a planet's retrograde, it becomes a bit more subconscious. That's one of the easiest ways to put it across. Now, if you think you've got this planet of expansion that likes to reach out and move and touch in the house of family, which of course is very close to the Italians, but it also means that for Italians, which are a Gemini nation, so the, the energetic blueprint print of Italy is Gemini, which is a very, which is a moving, movable sign. It's an air sign. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's air and it's mutable. This has been particularly difficult for Italians to deal with because to deal with the confinement. And of course, we've seen much uh, of what is happening in Italy right now. Now, if we go to the third house here, this is the third house, which would naturally correlate to the third sign, Gemini. So this is the house of movement. And in there we see here, planet Saturn. Now, Saturn's very interesting because it is the planet of restriction. Yeah, restriction, confinement, 
uh, the planet of discipline, duty, hard work, perseverance, but it's also that, that planet which uh, can affect us a lot psychologically because it, it tends to remove us from people. Now, this is very, very specific because this planet at the moment is very, very strong. Saturn rules Capricorn and it rules Aquarius, which are these two signs here. And basically in early January, Saturn moved into its own house. It moved into Capricorn, which makes it extremely powerful. But I'll get around uh, and explain more about that as I go along. Then we have the fourth house, which is the house of the home. It literally represents real estate. It represents the mother. It represents the emotions. It represents luxuries. It represents cars, how we feel about things. Um, it's all sorts of, uh, of our comfort, childhood memories growing up. It's a water house. It's a psychic house. Um, you know, it, it is very intuitive and re it re correlates to the sign of cancer in the natural zodiac. Then we have the fifth house, which is the house of fun, the house of speculation. Uh, it is the house of romance. It is the house of, of dating. It's the house of counsel, where you give advice and counsel. It's also the house of universities. So, of course, uh, and higher education. So, of course, this will correlate to uh, wh whichever map you see of that astrological map you see of a nation that I do, you will know when I talk about these themes, they apply to the whole nation. We have then go on to the sixth house. This house, along with the twelfth, are two of the most important houses happening on planet Earth right now. The sixth house is the house of health. So in anyone's chart, you can look at the sixth house and you can see how health, health and stuff plays out. Let me just scratch myself a little bit. <clears throat> and uh, the, sixth, the sixth house is the house of health, like I said, but it's also commuting. It's also everyday work. I will go on record to say this is the most neglected house in every chart. Why? Because it's the least sexy house. No one likes to talk about the sixth house because it's just ordinary stuff it's bills it's your mortgage it's your daily commute it's to do with your colleagues it's your house of adversity house of like your enemies and basically it's it's a house that people just be like eh, you know they can't be bothered with until something goes wrong with that house as they say health is wealth yes the sixth house, this is all of our emergency care workers, this is all of our NHS staff, this is all of people stacking shelves. These are all these people, the workers, the unsung heroes. The sixth house is very much a house of the unsung heroes who now people realise, guess what, are incredibly important. You know, these people were shunned to one side and I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who's doing sixth house work at the moment, essential work across the globe, keeping the nation going. And it's long overdue that people like you were appreciated and understood because now people are being called heroes, which they quite rightly are. This is a house that deals with a lot of issues. We've got a lot of people putting themselves in harm's way but they're showing great uh, courage and perseverance. And I just want to personally thank uh, them and I'm sure everyone else would agree for all of their hard work. But the sixth house, the overlooked house, the one that no one pays attention to until it goes, something goes wrong with it. Then we have the seventh house, which is relationships. That is, I can represent our romantic partner, our marriage partner. Actually, the fifth house is more romantic. Seventh house is more about contracts. So that's the person that we kind of live with, or we have some kind of contractual arrangement with. But it's also the house of business, yeah, and the outside world. And this again is will all be very kind of relevant. Then we come to the eighth house. Dun dun dun. Okay, this one. This this is a tough one. Yeah, this is a tough one. Hands down, eighth house is the toughest house on the block. Yeah, why? Because it deals with death and transformation. 
it deals with taxes, it deals with inheritance, it deals with um, all of the stuff that's kind of icky and awkward in life. It deals with what is hidden, it deals with the taboo. However, there are advantages to the eighth house because, like I said, it is also a house of transformation. It is also where we can do our meditation, our spiritual practice, um, our deeper psychological understanding. This is also the house of psychology. There are many famous um, psychics and astrologers and, uh, and uh, psychologists that have a strong eighth uh, house. Carl Jung, for example, had a lot of planets in the eighth house. So this is, it's not an easy house, but this is also the house that has the most to teach. Hands down, 12th house too, but I would say hands down, 8th house, you learn the most. Now, if we look here, you see this is the 8th house of the Italian chart. Saturn with Mars and with Jupiter and with Pluto are all in this house. I don't have my little overlay because I'll, I'll have to turn, turn, turn from the camera and basically grab it off and... I don't want to break the flow right now but basically we have this huge stellium um, that is happening for every nation all over earth and wherever capricorn falls in that nation's chart i'm calling that the hot box that's the hot box because we've got all the action going on there and i basically refer to it as tumble dryer because you basically you've got so many planets in there doing their thing and mixing everything up then let's go to the ninth house you see here, this is the glyph of Venus uh, for um, in the Italian, uh, it's just the universal glyph, but in the Italian chart, it falls into the ninth house, which is that also the house of religion. And you'll see here, it's been aspected by Saturn. Saturn is also the planet of structure and architecture. And Venus um, represents the arts. When you put all of that together, what do you get? You get the Vatican. Yeah. So for me, in the Italian chart, Venus here in the ninth house, that is the Vatican. And of course, that's very important to them as well. It's also in the sign of Aquarius, which is the universal sign of all, all humanity. And what happens? All of humanity go to the Vatican. Uh, and it can also represent the Catholic Church as a whole with its spread, with its reach uh, and, and its teachings. Now, here is the tenth house. This is known as the house of uh, public service, karma, um, public karma in the sense of what we have to, the karmas we need to do for the world, duty. But the short and the shorthand of it is uh, the career house. Now, I call this the greenhouse because basically it's a house of glass. It's the house of scrutiny as well. Whatever happens in this house, everyone can see. And there's certain planets that prefer to be here. In fact, all planets do well in the 10th house, but particularly the sun, yeah? Which is represented by this glyph here. You'll also see the glyph for Mercury, and you'll also see the glyph for Neptune. I'm gonna come back to this, this is really important. But let me move on to the 11th house. The 11th house is known as the house of great gains. It represents our social networks, international networks, guilds, associations, the house of great gains. A lot of people like this house because, of course, it's to do with uh, a little bit of the money and all that kind of stuff. But again, more on that later. And then just to finish off, we've got the 12th house here. Now, this is really important, too, because I said the 6th and the 12th house are very important. Now, the 12th house is also known as the house of endings. Yeah. House of losses. Yeah. So it's not always the easiest house to deal with. However, it's very international. It's also a house of uh, travel international travel but in particular going to places like um yoga retreats spiritual retreats going out into the forest it's it's the house of isolation quite literally house of isolation it's also known as the house of sleep the house of bed pleasures why because when we when when we go to sleep we you know we sleep in the bed and obviously other stuff tends to happen in bed as well um and but this is really important so i was remarking to uh, a friend of mine uh, just the other day because this is the house of isolation the whole world pretty much is now in the 12th house we're in this axis of 12th house sixth house you see there's always the house opposite always has something to say about that house 
So we're in that house of health, dealing with health, health issues, and we're all dealing with isolation. Yeah. So let me go back and talk a little bit about the eighth house and what's going on there. Now, like I said before, unfortunately, the eighth house is uh, a house of death and rebirth. Yeah. Now, what part of the reason why Italy is having such an awful time right now? Now, of course, this is happening all across the world. And I'll have to talk about America very soon as well, because they've got a lot going on there. But basically, the eighth house, all those planets that I mentioned are piling up in there. So if we think Mars now for a Gemini nation, Mars is not a very good planet because it, it depends on which houses it rules. Now, you'll see here. The sixth house is Scorpio. Scorpio belongs to Mars under the old rulership. And it's also the uh, 11th house here. So we're seeing their house of health is being very uh, triggered and affected. It's just even in the natal chart. But we also see internationally how uh, Italy is also being perceived and how it's affecting the people, the masses at, at large. And we see this is very difficult. Um, I also call this the Mafia House as well for, 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 for Italy, but that's another another subject. So at the moment we have, I might have to pull up another map. Let me just see if I can get, um, I will pull up another map where we can see all these transits. Now this is the USA, but what I wanted to show because everyone's eighth house is being triggered at the moment this goes to show where the major aspects are happening so just so you get a sense an idea just imagine overlay um, those kind of things in, in respect of what I'm talking about those aspects these lines that you see here they're called drishti so wherever a planet looks it affects so we have Mars. So we have the Mars, the planet of, of war, of conflict, but of energy. It also uh, represents the medical profession, the army profession. It's in Capricorn too, but in the sign of Capricorn, it's exalted. So we've been seeing, look at all of this innovation with medicine, the coordination of surgeons, of uh, even people that are opticians or anyone in the medical profession. <clears throat> even though that's technically six house and Virgo, you know, it, any sense of emergency or pressing times and things like that uh, also come under the guise of uh, Mars, which is exalted at the moment. So we're gonna see more intervention and help from the military. We've seen military boats. We've also seen field host hospitals spring up as well. That's very military and that's the real positive expression of Mars. In there as well, um, we also have Jupiter. So planet Jupiter, all the planets always keep moving. It takes about 12 years for Jupiter to make an orbit. Jupiter is also in the sign of, uh, it's also in the eighth house uh, in Capricorn, in the Italian chart, but it's in Capricorn. Now, this is the debilitation sign of, of Jupiter. What does Jupiter represent? Jupiter represents wealth, abundance, optimism, and that feel good factor, um, money, cash systems, as well as uh, philosophy and religion and uh, the law and stuff like that. But unfortunately, Jupiter, I mean, sorry, Capricorn is the debilitation sign of Jupiter. So what does that mean? That means, um, as we've seen, our optimism uh, has been knocked, but especially in the States, because of course, what we're worrying about bills, yeah? money going out, cash flow, economy, all of these various different things. However, Jupiter um, also has uh, something to help it because Capricorn, or shall I say Saturn, is in its own sign. Uh, basically, uh, that really helps the situation. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn and I'm just going to get the little overlay so it all makes sense. Um, of what's going on. Sorry that I had to turn away from you guys, but it just it just makes more sense if I just do this. All right, 
so let me just put this here so what I've done is I've just overlaid with tracing paper the uh, major stuff that's going on so we see Saturn in there Jupiter in there Mars in there and we've got Pluto in there this doesn't happen very often in Capricorn it happens maybe once every thousand years something like that in that ballpark some say once every 2,000 years but I need to completely verify that but let's just say it is a very rare and transformative uh, transit for everyone on planet Earth basically and I just wanted to highlight this so people understand why things are so intense now Depending on the ascendant, which I think you can see there, that decides the order of the houses. So Capricorn will fall into different houses for different nations, yeah? So it's not all going to be in the eighth house. Say, like, for example, in the UK, it's in the fourth house. And Saturn, planet Saturn, is actually a very strong um, planet for us. So it's not affecting us quite as much. I'm going to do specials on the UK because I am writing a book at the moment about the UK chart. <clears throat> which is called uh, Fourth House Issues, uh, why the UK struggled with love, and then in brackets, until coronavirus. Uh, because we're seeing a lot of love happen in the UK right now, but for us, this is all happening in uh, the fourth, in the fourth house. But just to kind of wrap, wrap this up, I just wanted to highlight the most important thing to talk about before I close this video. Now, remember I said this was a Gemini disease. In the Italian chart, Mercury, planet Mercury, is retrograde, so it means it's going backwards. This happens normally about three times a year, but this is very significant because Mercury rules Gemini, and like I said, the big CV is a Gemini disease, so that's already not great. We have the sun there, which is good in the 12th house. It's very bright. It does very, uh, sorry, in the 10th house, it does very well there. Um, it likes to shine there, but what I need to show you is this. This factor here, Neptune, this is planet Neptune. Now, Neptune is a great planet. Don't get me wrong, it gives a lot of musical talent. It gives a lot of spirituality, a lot of faith. It's the planet of we're all in it together. But each planet has its pros and its cons, its light and its shade. And the shade of Neptune is disease. Yeah, it can be hard to cure diseases, viruses, diseases that are weird yeah diseases that are odd and unusual and what i've been looking for are relationships between planet mercury that is uh you know dealing with the gemini disease and neptune and what i have found is this is that there is a relationship between these two planets in the nations that have been affected the most you can see it in the uh chart of china if i go here Mercury, no, that's Spain. Mercury and Neptune together, yeah?